taking place. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, and this past week we had occasion to remember the lives of different people on three different, um, in the Protestant world, we refer to them as commemorations or days of remembrance, in the, where our Roman Catholic sisters and brothers are more commonly referred to as saints' days. And for some of us in some Protestant traditions, we were not raised with the idea of saints' days or commemorations. Other of us were. And what is a saint's day or a day of commemoration or remembrance? And first of all, all of us, we are all saints. We are, we are all baptized, made members of the family of God. We are all children of God in our baptisms. God has claimed us as God's own. But while we are all saints, we are also all sinners. We are both. And we need a Redeemer. We need a Savior. That is why we hear that message again. Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. And through the years of the church's existence, there have been certain people who have shown us by exemplary lives, by the example of what they have done in their lives, by their actions. They have shown us things that for us can be role models. They, have, they, they can inspire us. Great people from the past who have done the things of God that can give us inspiration and hope. People that we can perhaps emulate or learn from things they have done. For example, December 6th, St. Nicholas Day. St. Nicholas Day. Nicholas was Bishop of, of Mira. He died in the year 343. Mira is in what is now Turkey. St. Nicholas was known for the giving of gifts, especially uh, financial gifts, to the poor and to children especially. But by his acts of, of helping those who were in need. And through the years, uh, St. Nicholas has always been remembered. Um, in Holland, St. Nicholas became, uh, the word there, uh, his name became Sinterklaas. And Sinterklaas eventually in, in our country became Santa Claus. And as it happens, we don't celebrate St. Nicholas Day so much, although it was a big holiday, it's still yet remembered in many parts of the world. And we have, on St. Nicholas Day, in other parts of the church, they remember to give gifts to the poor, and that would be the day of gift giving in the family, so that Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, are reserved for simply celebrating the gift of Christ, not celebrating how much you were able to buy in the store in the previous shopping season. St. Nicholas, a man whose service, uh, his life of service, of, of giving to the poor, to children, for those in need, it was so beautifully illustrated here in this community because we dedicated the Tree of Hope on St. Nicholas Day. So we continued that practice here, whether we knew or not, by the extraordinary generosity of this community on St. Nicholas Day. And we can all learn from him and continue to learn, doing acts of love and kindness, doing concrete things to help other people. December 2nd, a day of remembrance for four women. Roman Catholic women, Sister Eda Ford, Sister Mara Clark, Sister Dorothy Kazel, lay worker Jean Donovan. Dorothy Kazel, by the way, was from Cleveland, and Jean Donovan um, lived in Cleveland in her adult life. So people who lived not so far from us. You know, most saints' days tend to be um, 
or days of remembrance, days of commemoration, tend to be on days uh, of their death. Um, not all, but for most. These four saints of God were murdered in El Salvador in 1980. They lived the gospel. They did the things that the gospel called them to do. Did we hear in our first lesson from Isaiah that we are to be with the poor and we are to seek equity for the meek of the earth? That is indeed what these four missionaries in El Salvador did. They were with the poor, advocates for the poor, assisting the very, very poor people in El Salvador, well, those who were in the ruling government who wanted it all for themselves, embarked on a campaign of, of violence against um, the church, because the church was bearing witness for the poor. They had killed the um, Archbishop Oscar Romero earlier that year as he stood at the altar celebrating communion. They, they shot him with a sniper's bullet. On December 2nd, these four faithful women were terrorized, abused, and then killed by the forces of the, of the government, that the ones who were oppressing the poor. They were faithful to the end, doing the things of God, and we can take inspiration from their lives. And we had a new Saints Day added to our calendar this week. December 5th, the day of the passing of Nelson Mandela. We have been privileged to have lived in the time of Nelson Mandela. And there is not sufficient time this morning. We could go this morning, this afternoon, this evening, and into the next day talking about the greatness of Nelson Mandela. I'll simply say that He's, he did the work of God in this world more than, than most anybody I know. He was in prison for 29 years on that island in the hot African sun, forced to, in his crime, was advocating for democracy, advocating for equality for all people. And the government of South Africa that he fought against, the apartheid government, was one of the most evil governments in human history, and I think since World War II, the most evil government that there was in the world. And we can, we can debate that point, except I find them particularly heinous because the um, white ruling oppressors of, of, of the government in South Africa used our God to justify their repression. They used our scriptures to justify what they did. They said that the scriptures indicated that they, the white Europeans, were superior, were called by God to be superior, and that God had made the Africans and those of mixed races and the Asians to be inferior to the whites. Hard to believe that the scriptures were used in such a way, but they were. Nelson Mandela was in prison for 29 years for seeking democracy for all people and the way the government, the apartheid government of South Africa kept the vast majority of people who were African mixed races or um, Asian subjugated was brutal, it was vicious. Two great men, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and um, Nelson Mandela fought against that, and Mandela was kept on that island for 29 years. And those of us who were seeking a way to bring justice to South Africa, even the most optimistic among us could never could conceive of a way that freedom, deliverance from oppression, that an end to apartheid, we didn't see a way that that would come 
without probably the shedding of much blood, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of lives being lost because that government was not going to let go and uh, clench fist and held on to its weapons and use those to oppress uh, the people. But enough pressure was brought to bear. Nelson Mandela was re released from, from jail on that island in 1990. He, was, he said that as he walked out of that prison, he knew that if he hung on to his hatred and bitterness, he would forever be in prison. So he walked out and let the hatred and bitterness go. And he loved his enemies. He loved those who had jailed him. And he said, we must have a South Africa where all are welcome. We must not have, there is no time for revenge or bitterness or recrim recrimination. This is a time to move forward. Uh, sometimes in our own lives, we get mad at somebody, a slight, uh, some, we perceive an insult, somebody's done something maybe really wrong to us and we carry that with us for so long, sometimes our whole lives. If Nelson Mandela could forgive 29 years on that island and the systematic oppression of his people for generations, and we hang on to the things that we get upset with other people about, Nelson Mandela was able to transition South Africa from that apartheid system to a democracy without violence. It's the most astounding thing I've ever seen in my life. Without violence, the only other thing that comes close is the fall of communism, which also happened without a shot being fired. God does work in this world. As the scriptures say, do you not perceive it? God is at work. God delivers his people. As Psalm 27 says, we see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Nelson Mandela, known to his people as Madiba, always had the spirit of reconciliation, of love for all people which made South Africa a place where there could be equality for all people. And how, how was he able to do this? By God's grace, by putting away thoughts of revenge, of retribution, of all of that. You know, one of his favorite poems was one you all know, Invictus by William Ernest Henley. I'm just gonna read to you the last stanza. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. By God's grace, we can control ourselves and our emotions. And if we do that which God has called us to do in our own time, we have seen in South Africa the wolf laying with the lamb, the leopard lying down with the kid. In our own time in South Africa, due to the work of Nelson Mandela, we have seen the calf and the lamb and the fattening together. We have seen this in our own time. We have seen this in our own time. Would, would the world be different today if we all, if we all lived life following the examples of these people, Nicholas, Edith Ford, Mary Clark, Dorothy Kaisel, Jean Donovan, and Nelson Mandela. We hear the call today on the second Sunday of Advent to repent and prepare the way of the Lord. And if we do that, we do that with joy. We will be able to live. Amen. The peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. We'll continue our worship with the hymn with joy. <laughs> 